Well, here we go with another proof using our corresponding parts of congruent triangles, exercise 23 from the section. My objective is to prove these two angles are congruent. Those two angles also designated by myself is 1 and 2. And we're going to use overlapping triangles as you've already seen. We've got a couple angles marked congruent T and U. I've got them marked in blue. The two red angles are also congruent. That will be X and Z. And also I've got a segment. I've got a segment right here. X, Y, Y, Z. So those are all my givens. They're already marked on the drawing. So let's um, look at this triangle. This is the triangle that I want to consider. These two triangles, these overlapping triangles, are congruent if we look at it over here. Angle, angle, side. The other triangle, blue angle, red angle, side. So the two triangles are clearly congruent by angle, angle, side. Now comes the corresponding part. Now mind you, angles 1 and 2 aren't congruent by CPCTC. Instead, I'm going to need to use my three-letter identifiers because after all, this angle here, oh, sorry, not that one, this angle right here, which would be x, y, u, that consists of angle 1 and angle 3. If I were to reflect the triangle this way and this way, that corresponding angle would be consisting of angles 2 and 3. And therefore, I have to use the three-letter identifiers there. You can't just use numbers. But it makes sense that if these two angles are congruent, let me just take away this angle. If I subtract the same angle from both of them, then the differences are congruent. So we're going to finish with the subtraction theorem from chapter 2. Angles 1 and 2 are congruent because I've removed the same angle from both of them. So there you go finished. Well, here we go with exercise number 24. It's a neat proof with a lot of givens. I've color-coded them to make it look easier. All the blue segments are given as congruent as well as the red ones. So a um, couple things we notice right away. We've got two pairs of vertical angles and again you could have made this to several different lines. You could have made that two different lines but I'm going to put it as one. So the two blue angles, one and two, are congruent. So are the red angles, three and four. And you see what we're going to have here. We've got a pair of triangles on this side. And let's say over here, I see I could either consider these triangles as being reflections, or I could look at it this way, and they're rotations. Either way, uh, the two red triangles are congruent. The two blue triangles are congruent. So let's get it, we'll write it down. The two triangles are congruent by side angle side. Again, this could be two separate lines. I'm just putting it into one. Then by using our corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I can conclude that the, their corresponding parts are congruent. And then finally, since my objective was to say FL is congruent to HN, I'm just going to add them up. Now the addition theorem we had back in chapter 2, if congruent segments are added to congruent segments, their sums are congruent. So one red or one blue, one red equals one blue plus one red. And we're done. Okay, let's see if we can prove these two angles congruent, the angles at Q and S. Make sure you've got your diagram all drawn. In this case, I've elected to put my givens on one line. And let's get right to it. In my very first line, I'm first well, I'm going to put this down. So this is our given that PQ is parallel to VS. And from that, I know these two angles are congruent. I'll call them the red angles. So you can use angle P in uh, three letters, or you can put a one in there. I like the numbers. It's a lot easier. So angle P congruent to angle one. Um, and again, make sure you write this uh, postulate in the if-then form. If the lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent from chapter 3. So now I'm looking at these two parallel lines, and I can see that clearly angles 3 and 4 with the same transversal. 
angles three and four are congruent because they are also corresponding angles for that other set of parallel lines right there. Okay, so now I've got two pairs of congruent angles. We just need a side somewhere. And fortunately, we're given that. So right away, I'm seeing triangles congruent by angle, angle, side. If you want to see it, look at this, look at the, well, the shaded triangle, blue, red side, and then I'm going to slide over to here, this triangle, blue, red, angle, side. That's your angle, angle, side. So you should be able to see that by now. Angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. And these figures are a translation or a glide translation, however you want to say it. Once the triangles are congruent, then by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I can say that the two, any of their uh, corresponding parts are congruent, the remaining three, that is. Angle Q is congruent to angle S.